Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Babita and in this video we will learn how to identify the various layers of retina on OCT. In case you wish to see this topic in Hindi, then you can click the link to my Hindi channel that I've put in the description box below. Needless to say that in order to understand this topic, the student should have a basic understanding of the anatomy of retina and of its layers. So let's revise the layers first. This is the choroid and the layers of retina from outside to inside are the retinal pigment epithelium, layer of photoreceptors, external limiting membrane, outer nuclear layer, outer plexiform layer, inner nuclear layer, inner plexiform layer, ganglion cell layer, then comes the nerve fiber layer and the innermost layer is the internal limiting membrane. Anterior to the internal limiting membrane lies the vitreous cavity which is filled with vitreous humor. So with this basic understanding, let's see this pic of OCT macula. We know that this OCT scan is taken through the macula because this depression here corresponds to the fovea which is the center of the macula. So as you can see that there are many bright layers and there are many dull looking layers. These bright layers imply hyper reflectivity and these dull layers imply hypo reflectivity. So this means that there are many hyper reflective layers and there are many hypo reflective layers in the retina. The one thing that will help you in easily and quickly identifying the layers of retina is if you remember that the nuclear layers are hypo reflective on OCT scan. So what are the three nuclear layers of retina? The outer nuclear layer, the inner nuclear layer and the ganglion cell layer. So the three hypo reflective layers seen on OCT correspond to the nuclear layers of retina. Moving from outside to inside, the first hyporeflective layer is the outer nuclear layer. The next hyporeflective layer would be the inner nuclear layer. And the third hyporeflective layer is the ganglion cell layer. Now let's identify the hyperreflective layers as well. This is the choroid and the hyperreflective layer adjacent to the choroid is the RPECC complex which is the outermost layer of retina. RPECC complex consists of the RPE, choriocapillaris and the Brux membrane. Internal to that is the photoreceptor layer namely the inner segment outer segment junction of photoreceptors. If you look closely many different bands or zones can also be seen here. These zones also have specific names and we will learn about them in detail a little later in this video. The next hyperreflective line that you can see in this pic is the external limiting membrane. Then as we learned earlier comes the outer nuclear layer. From our understanding of the layers of retina, we know that the layer that comes after the outer nuclear layer is the outer plexiform layer. So this hyperreflective layer is the outer plexiform layer. The layer next to it is hyporeflective which is the inner nuclear layer. So the hyperreflective layer next to the inner nuclear layer would be the inner plexiform layer and then will come the third hyporeflective layer which is the ganglion cell layer and internal to the ganglion cell layer is the retinal nerve fiber layer which is hyperreflective and the innermost layer of retina which is also hyperreflective is the internal limiting membrane. The black area that you see in front of the internal limiting membrane is the vitreous. Vitreous has zero reflectivity because it is a clear fluid. It is optically transparent. The junction between the vitreous and retina is known as the vitro-retinal interface. The space in front of the macula is known as the pre-macular bursa. The posterior layer of vitreous is known as the posterior hyaloid which is not usually identifiable but it is visible in cases of posterior vitreous detachment. As you can see in these images, this hyperreflective membrane-like floating shadow which is either completely separated or partially separated from the retinal surface is the posterior hyaloid. Now coming to this part of the outer retina that is composed of photoreceptors and the retinal pigment epithelium, to understand it you need to first understand the structure of a photoreceptor. So the human retina has two types of photoreceptors, rods and cones. This is a rod and this is a cone. Each photoreceptor consists of an outer segment, an inner segment and a cell body. This cell body contains the nucleus of the photoreceptor 
and these nuclei or photoreceptors form the outer nuclear layer of retina. This is how photoreceptors are arranged in the retina. As you can see, this is the outer nuclear layer. The outer segments of photoreceptors lie in contact with the retinal pigment epithelium or the RPE. The apical surface of these RPE cells contain these tiny projections and the outer segments of photoreceptors lie encased within these projections. This junction between the RPE cells and the outer segments of photoreceptors is known as the interdigitation zone. This interdigitation zone was earlier known as cost or rost, which is cone outer segment tips and rods outer segment tips respectively. So this hyper reflective line that you can see just above the RPECC complex is the interdigitation zone. Let's go back to the structure of a photoreceptor. This part as we just learned is the outer segment and this part is the inner segment of a photoreceptor. This inner segment of a photoreceptor can be further divided into two parts. The outer part contains mitochondria while the inner part is mainly composed of endoplasmic reticulum. So this outer part of the inner segment of a photoreceptor that contains mitochondria is known as the ellipsoid zone and the inner part of the inner segment which contains the endoplasmic reticulum is known as the myoid zone. Let's see how these two zones look on OCT. So this hyper reflective line that you can see here, it represents the ellipsoid zone. Ellipsoid zone was earlier known as the ISOS junction of the photoreceptors, but that term has been replaced by ellipsoid zone or EZ. The myoid zone is mainly involved in protein synthesis and it appears as a hypo-reflective zone on OCT. So this hypo-reflective zone that can be seen above the ellipsoid zone is the myoid zone. Thus, four distinct hyper-reflective lines can be seen in the outer retinal layers of an OCT scan. These are from outside to inside, RPE or the retinal pigment epithelium. Then comes the IZ or the interdigitation zone. Then is the ellipsoid zone or EZ or ISOS junction. And the fourth line as we learned at the beginning of this video is the external limiting membrane. Another important thing that you should know is how do you determine whether you are seeing the OCT scan of your patient's right eye or of his left eye. For this you need to remember that the retinal nerve fiber layer is thickest at the optic disc. Since the optic disc is present nasally in the eye, the retinal nerve fiber layer would be thickest in the nasal part of the OCT scan. So how do you determine which side of the scan is nasal and which is temporal? Let us understand this with an example. This hyperreflective layer of the inner retina is the RNFL. You can see that the RNFL is thicker on this end as compared to the opposite end. So this is the nasal side and the other end is the temporal end. If you see another scan of the same patient which is through the optic disc, then this depression on the scan corresponds to the optic disc, which means that this is probably how the fundus of the patient looks. The optic disc is present on the right side of the image, so this is the right eye of the patient. Similarly on this scan, the RNFL is thickest on the left side of the scan, which means that this is the nasal side and this is where the optic disc is present, which means that we are looking at the left eye of the patient. So let's revise the layers of retina on OCT once again. This hyperreflective band is the RPECC complex, then comes the interdigitation zone, then comes the ellipsoid zone, then this dark band here is the myoid zone, above that is the hyperreflective line which is the external limiting membrane, then the hyperreflective layer that you can see here is the outer nuclear layer, above it the hyperreflective layer is the outer plexiform layer, the next layer is hyporeflective which is the inner nuclear layer. The hyperreflective layer above it is the inner plexiform layer. Next hyperreflective layer is the ganglion cell layer. Then comes the retinal nerve fiber layer which is hyperreflective and the innermost layer of retina is the internal limiting membrane which again is hyperreflective. So that is all for this video. Please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues if you found it useful. 
एंड डू सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल टू सपोर्ट फ्री एजुकेशन थैंक यू वेरी मच